everyone, welcome to Bowser Training Recode Solution. Um, so first of all, uh, if you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at bowsertraining.org. And also, as always, feel free to uh, scan this QR code so that you can receive the latest um, tech interview-related articles. Uh, it's in Chinese, uh, it's WeChat. And uh, also, if, you are, uh, if you're interested in becoming an interviewer, feel free to shoot us an email at bowsertraining at outlook.com and we will uh, get in touch with you okay so today today we are going to uh, uh, talk about this question called can I win so this question is is a game like this so uh, think about this so two players they all they both play for their optimal which means they they always want you to win instead of lose so uh, take turns adding a number total from any integer let's say from 1 to 10 and the first one who uh, first causes the running total to reach or exceed 100 wins. So how does it work? For example, uh, what's the example? Okay, so basically they define two inputs. Two inputs. One is called the max choosable integer. The other is a desirable total, right? So this and also uh, they have one requirement, which means the integer cannot be reused. Once you choose one, it, they can never be reduced. So this kind of a rings as a bell. Okay, so that means it's unique. So one integer can only be choose once. That means there's a if you have n integers, there should be only two to the power of n different combos uh, as a key to memorize this. Um, and then basically you keep turns to playing this game. So if you choose, let's say, if your goal is it is uh, uh your goal is to see if the first player can win or not. So if the uh, maximum one is 10, that means you can choose from 1 to 10, and then desirable is 11, you will never win. It's because no matter what number you choose, your opponent can just choose another number that can exceed large or equal than 11. For example, if you choose 1, your opponent can choose 10, so it's 11. If you choose 2, your, your opponent can choose 10, for example, you can still win, or choose uh, 9, they can still win. So how do you solve this problem? So this is actually, um, first of all, the brute force solution should come into your mind. So essentially, you will just country, you will just uh, calculate all the different combos. So that essentially results to an n factorial solution. Because why is n factorial? Is because you, if you have n numbers, which is n here is your max max choosable integer. You have n. If your first number chooses as n. Your second number can only choose, uh, can only have n minus one situations, and then n minus two. So basically, that would be n factorial, and then you will just evaluate every single possibility of each of the n factorial. Like choose the first one, not choose different com different combinations. So and then you just keep going, and then that is all factorial. That will definitely be uh, time. Uh, it's not optimal, right? So the way to think about this is uh, this remind when I first saw this uh, this re reminds me of the name game. So I will put the link here. I actually have uh, accidentally recorded two. One is the English version name game. The other is the uh, uh, lead code, uh, the Chinese version. So think remember the name game. You can only have one, two, three different combos. So what you do is you do a top down approach, and uh, you just essentially still uh, brute force to calculate stuff. However, here you will just remember. You will have like a hash map, uh, or you call it a cache, so to remember your intermediate result, so that you can eventually do pruning. Um, somewhere I should have the code somewhere here. Uh, you can you can watch that, but the idea is the same. So with this idea in mind, um, and also you can check right now. Lico is actually pretty cool. You have have the top solution, and then this guy actually explained pretty clearly. Especially the time complexity part, why using the memorization is two to the power of n, and the brute force is all n factorial. Um, so with this in mind, the way we solve this is I also put down a few comments right here. Um, so this is a function. So first thing, of course, some kind of uh, always some house house cleaning and edge case and early termination uh, conditions. If desired total less than maximum truth less than zero or this is a less than one always return false right uh or remember to calculate how 
how do we calculate the sum um, is you know, you know the formula, right? 1 plus the larger times the total divided by 2. So if the sum is less than this, you, will, you can never reach the goal. You always lose. Um, here, so we need to keep a state for each of the integer, whether this integer is stored, is basically uh, taken or not taken. So it's binary. So you have a, this integer. Let's just say 0 is not taken, 1 is taken. So I used to... Uh, do this as a because you have all these integers taken or not taken. You want to combine them as a key, which is a string. So if I if you use boolean, it will actually be uh, TLE uh, because when you do this join with each of the this, so boolean is actually quite slow. Uh, so that's why I just use the integer. Um, and then you this is your state. So this is essentially when you do top down, you have to recursively. Normally, people whenever you do top down brute force, you think about DFS, right? So we have lots of videos in DFS. You can search that out, and then this cache essentially is a, is a hash map. The key is the string which represented by this state. So, for example, if the state looks like if you have three integers, the state looks like zero one zero. That means you choose your first one. Uh, not choose your first one, choose your second one, and not choose your third one. So this essentially becomes your string key of the uh, of your uh, cache cache key. Now previously, what I was doing is like you combine a string like false, true, like this, and false. So even with this, I think what I did is uh, something like this. Okay. Um, so this is your cache, and then you. This is your recursion function, explore. So in your explore, what you need to do is, so first of all, you have to join your key. You have to hit your cache. So you do this, you build your, this essentially just build up, build up your key looks like this. And then uh, if the key already in cache, you directly get the, the result out. All else, for each of the number in this maximum truthable integer, uh, remember, uh, if the state equals to one, means you're already chosen, you don't need to choose this again, so you just continue. And then you mark the state, typical, very typical DFS. So if if your current sum is already larger than total, here I minus one because I'm using the index. So if i is equal to zero, that means actually integer one, right? If it's already large or equal than desired total, you're, you're set. So basically you set the, the cache to be true, you restore the recursion state, and then you return true, return early. And here on line 50, remember in, in DFS, you always need to reset the state. So here, remember, see this is a not. It means if you trying to, if you can win, that means after, um, at this state, if you can win, that means your previous state, you have to lose, right? If you can win your previous state, that means you can never, you will just lose. So basically that's why when you explore, when you keep exploring, your next state has to has to be loose. So that's why when you minus your desired, this can be a constant, like I like I said it here. It could be a constant, doesn't matter, I just pass it here. So your previous state has to lose so that you can win. Right? Um, and then you set the cache and then you return false. So this is how essentially this problem is like a typical DFS plus this uh, uh, hash table or cache to memorize the state. And then, um, regarding the time complexity, like I explained before, brute force, it will be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times equals to 1. So this will be n factorial. And then here, uh, the, with the pruning, the time complexity now becomes exponential, um, which is 2 to the power of n, because for each of the key combo, there's only two to the power of n combinations, and then you only calculate it once because you never do more calculation simply because you always remember the state and you return, you check the state and early return. Um, another way to think about this is, is um, this is top, uh, top down, right? There, when solving the uh, dynamic programming problem, this is essentially a DP problem. Um, we can also do bottom up. But to do bottom up, remember we have to allocate the array, right? And so then we keep the another state. So we'll have the initial state, and also we have the uh, state transition function. But this state transition function is a little bit weird 
to write it uh, bottom up because for the k part, you have to essentially do the state from 1 to k minus 1. So it's the same, you can try to code it up, it's just not that intuitive uh, compared to top down. Um, yeah, that's all I want to add to this question. Just compare this to name game, not the brain teaser name game I explained in this video, but the normal way to solve the name game, the top down with the map as a memorization to prune it. Um, okay, thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye.